This short presentation introduces the concept of credit valuation adjustment using components from the corresponding e-learning module found under Optimal MRM's online training service. In September 2006, the Financial Accounting Standards Board introduced new accounting standards, FAS 157, to provide guidance on how organizations should arrive at the fair value of financial assets and liabilities in financial reporting. When FAS 157 was introduced, the size of the over-the-counter derivatives market in terms of notional amount or face value was approximately $586 trillion. Almost two-thirds of this amount was comprised of interest rate derivative contracts, with the rest comprised of equity, FX, commodity, and other types of derivatives. By 2013, the size of the over-the-counter derivatives market had grown to $710 trillion. To put this in perspective, global GDP in 2013 was $73 trillion, or 10% of the notional amount of OTC derivatives outstanding. This comparison is somewhat exaggerated, however, because unlike straight debt, it is the fair or market value of these transactions that is at risk of credit default. As an indication of counterparty credit exposure, the netted market value excluding collateral posted between counterparties averaged $3.5 trillion from 2009 to 2013. To put into perspective the potential risk associated with this credit exposure, excluding collateral, it is equal to the amount of Tier 1 capital, broadly defined as common equity and retained earnings minus goodwill, held by all large banks in the U.S., the Eurozone, the U.K., Japan, and more than 50% of Tier 1 capital held by the largest thousand banks worldwide. Although there are no reported numbers on collateral offsets to this aggregate exposure, the inclusion of collateral would be expected to act as an important buffer against this risk. The introduction of FAS 157 subsequently required banks and other originators of derivatives to adjust the value of their mark-to-market -market exposure by the risk of counterparty credit default. This adjustment is referred to as Credit Valuation Adjustment, or CVA. A common method used to determine the mark-to-market -market at different points in time over the life of a derivative position is to simulate risk factor changes. The simulated risk factor changes are then used to recalculate mark-to-market -market over time. The derivative position's mark-to-market -market may be positive or negative. A bank or derivatives dealer is primarily concerned with derivative positions that are mark-to-market -market in its favor. The initial exposure is defined as the current exposure, or CE. The expected exposure, or EE, is defined as the average of the distribution of exposures at each time step. Potential future exposure, or PFE, is defined as the expected exposure at a specific confidence level, such as 95%. Effective expected exposure, or triple E, is defined as the maximum expected exposure at any time step. Expected positive exposure, or EPE, is defined as the time-weighted average of expected exposure. Effective expected positive exposure, or EEPE, is defined as the time-weighted average of effective expected exposure. The maximum potential future exposure, or MPFE, is referred to as the peak exposure. Total expected exposure, or TEE, is defined as the sum of current exposure and potential future exposure and is generally used to calculate CVA. Effective expected exposure, expected positive exposure, and effective expected positive exposure are important components of CVA-related regulatory capital. Derivative counterparty credit risk exposure is intuitively thought of in terms of positive mark-to-market there is, of course, the opposite side of the simulation exercise to consider, where the bank or derivatives dealer can be expected to owe the counterparty some mark to market in the future, or what is otherwise referred to as negative exposure or negative mark to market. In the same way that a bank's potential positive exposure is used to calculate CVA as a function of the counterparty's risk of credit default, Potential negative exposure can be used to calculate a debt valuation adjustment, or DVA, as a function of the bank's own risk of default.
the counterparty's credit deterioration increases the bank's exposure to the counterparty's risk of default and in turn increases the amount of CVA and net CVA. Counterintuitively, the bank's own credit deterioration reduces its net CVA exposure, which generates a profit, whereas the bank's credit improvement increases its net CVA exposure, which generates loss. Optimal MRM invites you to visit its store online to learn more about this and other available market risk e-learning modules.